afternoon to everyone. Uh, today, or in this uh, hour, we'll talk about estimating ultimate recovery, uh, which is uh, the acronym for EUR. And that is uh, an important uh, number that managers like to know when you're working on a, a prospect or a drill location, how much uh, oil or how much gas will we be able to get up to the surface and uh, sell and make some money. So uh, I'll give an overview. We'll talk about uh, gross rock volume and we'll subdivide that and look at reservoir volume and then focus in a little more on pore volume and then ultimately hydrocarbon volume, which is what we would like to be able to report to our managers. So let's say you've uh, defined a prospect it has a good chance of holding hydrocarbons. A major question that is going to be asked is what's the value in uh, dollars or euros or pounds or yen uh, for your particular prospect. Ultimately, you want to know if your company is going to make some money off of uh, drilling at this location. So you need to know what the value of the recoverable hydrocarbons are minus all the cumulative costs. And so if that difference is positive, that would be a profit. And if it's negative, of course, uh, you would be losing money. Uh, so we want to estimate the uh, estimated ultimate recovery, the EUR, uh, and get the amount of oil or gas that we could get up to the surface and sell. Uh, the one other thing that we need in order to do that is to convert uh, the volume of oil into uh, dollars or the volume uh, of gas into, into dollars. And so we would need to have a estimate of what the future value of a barrel of oil is or a cubic foot of gas. So here's an example. It's from the uh, Gippsland Basin. It's the uh, area, the data set that a lot of the exercises uh, have uh, been using. And so we have a major unconformity and beneath that under unconformity, we have the Latrobe formation. Uh, that's our primary reservoir, uh, fluvial to near shore uh, to slightly offshore sands. Overlying that is the lake entrance shale that forms our seal. And uh, for uh, the Barracuda field, uh, most of the hydrocarbon is gas. There is an 11 meter thick column of oil at the base of the gas before we get into the uh, water filled latrobe. So a question that I might ask about a prospect in this particular setting is how much gas is there, turn that into a value in terms of dollars, and then we can see if it's going to be profitable to uh, drill here and uh, eventually develop the field and sell the gas. So to estimate the ultimate recovery, it uh, may seem like a daunting task, and it truly is. Uh, the way we handle it is we do it one step at a time. And so I'll be walking through these steps uh, so that you can uh, gain an appreciation for what we have to do. And uh, along the way, you can be thinking about uh, how we would uh, get some of the, the parameters that, uh, that we need for that estimate. So uh, first we'll estimate the hydrocarbon that we think is in the reservoir at the present day depths and at the present day pressures and temperatures. And that is no small task. Uh, and then we can consider if we know how much is in place, how much can we actually get up to the surface and how many barrels of oil or cubic feet of gas will we be able to uh, deliver uh, and sell and make some money. So the first thing we have to figure out is how much hydrocarbon is in place uh, in the reservoir at depth. So we start by estimating the total volume of rock in the property. So uh, I have a little uh, diagram uh, I, uh, icon, a uh, little uh, tank uh, uh, barrel of oil. And then we want to reduce that volume step by step until we get hydrocarbon. So of that total volume, only a certain port of it part of it will be reservoir quality. And then that reservoir quality, we can at least theoretically think of as a volume of solid grains and then a volume of pores between the grains. And then for those pores, 
some of those poor, some of the pore space will be filled with water. Some of it will be filled with hydrocarbon. In the case of Barracuda, I'll say that it's filled with gas. And so we want that red volume out of the whole uh, uh, trap. So uh, total rock volume is our first step. Uh, what we can do is we can map the aerial extent of the trap and all the software that uh, is used for interpretation these days has a planimeter. So you can digitize a polygon and when you close off the polygon, it will report out what the area is in whichever units you prefer. Uh, it could be in uh, square meters or square kilometers or acres. Um, we'll estimate how far down dip the hydrocarbons extend. We have to convert the uh, thickness from milliseconds, an isochron value, to a thickness in feet or meters, an isochore value. And if we have a well nearby or we use uh, some stacking velocities from the seismic data processors, we can convert uh, thickness, uh, say 100 milliseconds, into uh, 30 meters. So we'll combine the hydrocarbon extent, the area with the thickness, and that'll give us a total rock volume. And that could be in uh, cubic kilometers or in a English system, a lot of people use acre feet. So we get the field area, multiply it by an average thickness, and we get the total rock volume. So the next step is we have to figure out of that total volume, how much is reservoir quality rock? So we start with the total rock volume. Uh, we estimate what the net to gross for the reservoir will be. Uh, the net would be the good sands. The, the rest of it would be uh, poor quality sands or silts or shales or any other type of uh, non-reservoir lithology. Uh, we need to know what the net to gross is within that uh, uh, reservoir interval. And a lot of times the net to gross varies by the environments of deposition. For the Barracuda field, uh, we have three um, uh, environments. We have shore face sands, we have delta plain sands, and we have fluvial sands. And if you do the exercise, uh, you'll be using these numbers. Uh, we'll assume for the portion of the field that has shore face sands, the net to gross is 80%. For delta plain, it's 65. And for the fluvial environment, it's 50-50. Uh, now we need the pore volume. So we start with the reservoir sand volume. And porosity is a measure that tells us how much of a volume is solid grains versus the space in between the grains or the pore space. Uh, porosity is another factor that often varies, uh, varies by the environment of deposition. And for Barracuda, what we would assume is that the uh, uh, porosity uh, for shore face deposits or shore face sands would be 20%. The porosity is a little lower in delta plain, 18%, and lower still in a fluvial setting, 16%. So if we take the reservoir sand volume, multiply it by porosity, we can get the pore volume. And so that would be the green portion of my little uh, icon of a, uh, a barrel. And finally, the pore space will have some hydro hydrocarbon in the pores and some water in the pores. All the water will not get evacuated when hydrocarbons uh, migrate in. Uh, we call that irreducible water. And that might be 20%. It might be 10% uh, water. Uh, the uh, uh, inverse of that uh, would be 80% hydrocarbon or 90% hydrocarbon. Uh, for Barracuda, our assumption is that the water, uh, the hydrocarbon saturation is 90% or uh, returning it around the water content is 10%. So if I have a value for the net pore volume, I can multiply that by the hydrocarbon saturation, uh, in this case 0.9, and that would give me the hydrocarbon volume. And if I'm doing this metrically and I use uh, kilometers, that would be cubic kilometers or I could have cubic meters. Uh, if I am doing it in terms of uh, English units, uh, I would have uh, uh, a volume that uh, typically is going to be reported in number of barrels. 
The other thing we need to do once we have what the volume is in the reservoir at reservoir conditions is to figure out how much we would get up to the surface or how much would we would re recover. So we can't get all of the hydrocarbon out of a reservoir. There's a certain recovery efficiency. And uh, for oil uh, worldwide, the recovery efficiency might be somewhere between 30 and 45%. Worldwide for gas, it might be uh, 30 to uh, 75 percent. Uh, what we'll use for Barracuda for the gas is a 70 percent recovery efficiency. There's a lot of factors that go into that recovery efficiency. Uh, I think the most important one is permeability of the reservoir, uh, temperature and pressure, and uh, what sort of drive mechanism to move fluids uh, are other important parameters. So that, uh, that tells us how much of the oil or gas in place we think we can get up to the surface. And then there's one other consideration, uh, a volumetric expansion, because when we're at depth under high temperatures and pressures, either oil or water will be more compressed. As we bring that up to the surface, the temperature's going to drop or the fluid's gonna cool, the pressure is going to drop, and so the drop in temperature and pressure will lead to an expansion in terms of the volume. So if we have the in-place hydrocarbon volume, we multiply that by a recovery efficiency, we multiply that then by the expansion factor, then we'll have a volume of hydrocarbon that we expect to get up to the surface and uh, eventually uh, process that and sell it to our customers. So there is an exercise associated with this, uh, this lecture. Uh, again, you all go through these uh, calculations, uh, figuring out what the total volume is, the full barrel, uh, what portion of that is reservoir quality uh, in the little diagram about the upper third, what portion of that upper third is solid grains versus pores, and then how much of the pore space is irreducible water and how much of it is uh, hydrocarbon uh, for Barracuda and the exercise uh, that you, you would work, uh, it would be gas. Uh, the exercise also talks about the uh, recovery efficiency and the uh, expansion factor uh, that is uh, tied into the actual uh, field at uh, Barracuda. So uh, if you so desire, you can uh, do that exercise, and uh, it's pretty straightforward and cookbookish. Uh, you can plug in all the numbers, and you really won't work up much of a sweat like uh, the guy here on the exercise bike. So uh, it was a kind of short unit. Um, let me put up the uh, agenda. Uh, so we've done our estimated uh, recovery. And we only have four more units to, to cover. Uh, and we are going to do the last two both on November 9th. So we'll talk about production, uh, geology, and geophysics. And then I have a, uh, a lecture uh, associated with uh, how we write reports uh, for industry. And we'll do both of those on November 9th. Uh, if I am remembering correctly, uh, 2 o'clock Eastern for the production and three o'clock Eastern time for the reports in industry. So I'll turn it back over to Dr. Sumi and she can correct me if I have my times off and uh, see if there are some questions. Great, um, um, what's your success rate in per percentage? Uh, I, I'm getting a, an echo, what are the percent? Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll copy and paste it. What is the success rate in percentage? Um, the success rate for wildcat wells, if that's uh, what the, the question is based on, worldwide, I would say uh, our industry now is uh, kind of in the 30 to 35% range of success rate. Uh, it depends on a number of factors. Uh, if there are, um, uh, direct hydrocarbon indicators, uh, including uh, amplitude versus offset, that uh, helps to de-risk a prospect. 
uh, our, our success rates uh, can be uh, close to 50 percent. I know it's a little like, like my audio is not great, but, but that was the only question that we have. have. Um, and so with that, uh, uh, we will end today's webinar. Thank you so much, for, much, Fred. Okay, and thanks uh, everyone for tuning in. And I uh, hope you are uh, continuing to uh, enjoy the uh, material that uh, I try to share with you. Hey. Wish everyone a good afternoon or rest of the day. Yes, sounds great. All right, bye everyone. Bye. -bye.